Good morning, everyone. Chris Profi, Musically Obsessed, and I've got a fun thread for you guys today. I have a feeling that we're going to hear some real cool answers for this one. This is a thread called Gimme Five Go-To Jazz Albums. Now, there are thousands of jazz albums to choose from. So you guys, if you jump on this thread, you're going to have to pick five of your go-to from the thousands that are out there. Um, so this actually, you know, thinking about it, I mean, there's so many. I mean, I've got so much jazz in my collection. I've got more, I have more jazz CDs than I do vinyl. But it actually wasn't as hard as I thought it was going to be because there are certain albums that I always go back to. Um, you know, I listen to to so much jazz, but you know, we all have those albums that are our favorites, okay? So that's kind of what I want you guys to show me to today, your go-to jazz albums. So, my first one is by a little band called Weather Report. Ever heard of them? This is an album called Sweet Nighter. This is their third album released in 1973. This album rips. I mean, you've got Joe Zawinul on keyboards. Hopefully I'm saying his name right. Wayne Shorter on saxophone uh, as the main players of this band. Um, being their third album, I, I, mean, I, like Weather, I like everything by Weather Report. Their first two albums were very experimental. And uh, this was the album where I feel like they got a little bit of groove in their sound. The songs uh, were a little bit more memorable. They weren't just uh, sort of uh, out there type music. And uh, I really feel like with this album, they kind of channeled more of that groove that Miles was doing around this time. So... I feel like it was the first album where things started to come together for Weather Report. Again, I love those first two albums. But this was the album, I feel like, where they got a little bit of a groove. There was actually uh, some structure to the music. And uh, like I said, the album rips. And, you know, with Joe Zawinul and Wayne Shorter, you cannot go wrong. So this is one of my go-to albums, Weather Report, Sweet Nighter, 1973. The next album is Ornette Coleman's Soap Suds, Soap Suds. This is a 1979 album. This is an acoustic duet album with Charlie Hayden. Charlie Hayden plays bass. He was an original member of the Ornette Coleman Quartet. And Ornette is on trumpet and tenor sax. Okay. This is on the Artist House label. I love this album. And I was thinking this morning, how am I going to explain this album? And here's the term that I'm going to use. Sound poetry. This album is sound poetry. You've got Ornette and Charlie Hayden creating this dialogue between each other. And it, it's soothing at times and sometimes a little jarring. But it's one of those albums that it, they're actually talking together through music. It's, it's an amazing album. And I've said this about other albums before, but this album you need to listen to more than once. And you're going to hear different things each time. It's uh, very unique in its sound. I love the cover art. And uh, yeah, an amazing album, go-to for me, definitely. Ornette Coleman and Charlie Hayden, 1979, Soap Suds, Soap Suds. Next, I had to put Miles in. I have to. And it's, you know, it's... I was like, do I put, do I talk about Bitches Brew? I listen to Bitches Brew all the time. Or do I put in On the Corner, because I listened to On the Corner as well. But then I remembered this album. 
Black Beauty. This was Miles Davis live at the Fillmore West, 1973. This was recorded uh, right after Bitches Brew and Jack Johnson came out. And I said, yeah, this album is amazing. This album rips. I mean, you've got Chick Corea on piano, Jack Dejanet on drums. Hopefully I'm saying his name right. Dave Holland bass. This is going to be a tough one to say. Air to Morira on drums and percussion. So the band is amazing. Two, two album set, 1973. If you look at the song titles on here, this came out on Columbia. Uh, it just says side one, Black Beauty, side two, Black Beauty, side three, Black Beauty, side four, Black Beauty. So it's all the same title, but what it is is they're all different. They're, they're variations of songs like Directions, Miles Runs the Voodoo Down, Sanctuary, Bitches Brew, and Spanish Key. Um, and the band, like I said before, I'm using that term ripping. They are ripping through these songs. Miles is just blowing the heck out of his trumpet. I love that cover too. I mean, you know, that just shows you that this album is going to take control of your mind. So Miles Davis, Black Beauty, 1973. Here's one I was listening to the other day. I, I was spinning this one probably at least three times in one day. McCoy Tyner. This is his 1976 album, Fly With The Wind. This was his ninth album on Milestones. And uh, you've got McCoy Tyner on piano, and uh, you've also got Ron Carter on bass, and you've got a string section behind them. Uh, an amazing album. This is a huge album big sounding majestic album and the cover art matches that if you've never listened to mccoy tyner before shame on you you got to listen to mccoy i've just gotten into him in the past year um and uh i was led to him and i've said this story before he does this he does he has an album called sama la yuka and the only reason I knew about that album was there was an SST band called Always August and they did a cover of the song Samala Yuka and I'm like this song is great and I, I come to find out that it was written by McCoy Tyner I uh seeked out that album and it led me to some of his other stuff and but this is definitely one of my favorites by him uh 1973's or 1976 Fly With The Wind and my last one I had to put Herbie in there. Yeah, this is his 1973 album, Flood. And I've talked about this one before. Actually, I'm getting the dates wrong. This is 1975, I'm sorry. 1975 album, Flood. This was released only in Japan at the time. This was his 16th album. Uh, this is the Headhunters Band performing songs from Headhunters, Thrust, and Manchild. It's just jazz fusion magic. Um... You know, let me show you, first of all, I mean, the cover is amazing. This is a gatefold. Look at that cover. Here's the inside. So they do uh, Maiden Voyage, Actual Proof, Spanky Lee, Watermelon Man, Butterfly, Chameleon, Hang Up Your Hang Ups. Yeah, 20-minute version of Hang Up Your Hang Ups. You've got Herbie on here. You've got... Benny Maupin, Paul Jackson, Mike Clark, Bill Summers, and Blackbird McKnight. This is produced by David Rubison, um, recorded live in Japan. Like I said, jazz fusion magic. So those are my go-to jazz albums. Um, I probably could have picked 10, 20 go-to jazz albums, but I thought limiting it to five would be pretty cool. Let me know what you guys think. I'd love to know what your jazz go-to albums are. You know, funny, looking at this, all of my go-to albums were from the 1970s. Hmm. Something was happening in the 70s in jazz. Obviously, for me, that's the era that I, I go back to. Um, and that's the fusion era, you know. Um, I like early jazz as well. 
I like some of the stuff in the 80s as well. Like Ch I almost pulled a Chuck Mangione album out today because I really like Chuck Mangione. I like some of his 80s stuff that, he's di that he did. And there were some good 80s uh, uh, jazz albums. I know Chick Corea had the electric band in the 80s, which were really good. Um, but I don't know. There's something about the magic of the 70s. And you guys who like jazz fusion, you know what I'm talking about. So listen, enough talking. Show me your five go-to jazz albums. Adios.